CEO of Emperant and co-founder of Leaf. Mr. Rumble Ramagnoli, founder and president of Relevance in Monaco. And finally, but not least, Mr. Anthony Saccone, Education, Equity, and Inclusion Program Director at H for Human Foundation, which is a part of H Farm. Thank you, all of my judges, all of our judges, I should say, for your great involvement, all your time, all your effort. If it weren't for you, we could not have put this show on. So thank you very much. So without saying, let's start the competition. So we're going to start with category one of bachelor's and master's students. The finalists for this category are Kendra for Polimoda, Italy. Luca from Grenoble, Ecole de Management in France. And 830 also from Polimoda, Italy. So we're going to start with by presenting one minute video of each team, and then they will have six minutes to pitch the project, followed by a Q&A of seven minutes where all the judges will have uh, the, the chance to ask questions to the teams. So our first team, Kandru from Polimoda, please come on stage. At Candor, we believe that people are inherently good. We set out on a mission to prove that statement true. Last year in the United States alone, individuals gave over 300 billion in donations to nonprofit organizations. We believe that number could be much higher. So why hasn't philanthropic giving reached its full potential? Giving is broken. As it stands today, the philanthropic industry lacks trust, traceability, and transparency. Candor revolutionizes the giving system. What does that look like? Vetting nonprofit organizations to ensure authenticity. Peace of mind in knowing exactly how your donations are being used. And curated services to support meaningful investments. At Candor, our goal is to empower the world's most purpose-driven investors and make giving a whole lot easier. Giving is broken. Based on our research, we found that only two to 4% of high net worth household income is donated to charity every year. We believe that number could be much higher. So why hasn't philanthropic giving reached its full potential? As it stands today, the philanthropic industry lacks trust and transparency. Many donors and philanthropists who could give more wish they knew how their money was being used for good. And with over 10 million nonprofits in the world, many of these donors lack the time it takes to sort through and find a cause that's meaningful to their life. At Candor, we believe that people are inherently good, and we set out on a mission to prove that statement true by empowering the world's most purpose-driven investors with technology. Candor was born out of a desire to revolutionize the giving system. What does that look like? Candor streamlines and simplifies the way people give by offering a digital and personalized philanthropic platform. Every nonprofit on Candor's platform is put through rigorous vetting procedures to promote donors' peace of mind. Additionally, our premium consulting service offers high-touch, one-to-one human interaction. Every donor on Candor's platform is paired with a personal tax return consultant to provide simplified advice when filing for deductions on their annual tax return. This is where Candor currently stands in comparison to our competitors. These three elements determine our standards against our competitors. The first being high touch consultancy, traceable donations and digitized platforms. Our revenue model is made up of two distinct forms of revenue. 
The first being a 3% commission fee on top of each donation. The next is a $50 monthly membership fee. Now to put that into perspective, and at face value, $50 may seem high, but based on research that we've done on premium dating apps, these apps charge around $60 a month for members to access the full benefits. And we believe that since people are willing to invest in the betterment of their social lives, they will be willing to invest in their social impact too. For the first year of operations, we will use our marketing and acquisition budget to attract new customers into the platform. This will be done in two ways. First, we will host or sponsor high network events, and with the help of a known spokesperson or ambassador, we will attract customers that are willing to test out the platform. This is also a great way to gain visibility and meet potential partners. We will also, following the target customer characteristics, use printed marketing such as pamphlets and or billboards that will be placed in high-end places such as jack clubs, recreational clubs, etc. Candor's first marketing tool is word of mouth. We trust that the acquired customers will share their experience and the services of the platform with their network of contacts. Starting the second year, we will host monthly fundraisers that will highlight one nonprofit out of the platform, and we will give all of the tickets sold um, profits to this feature nonprofit. We will also have a biannual gala that will highlight not only the nonprofit partners, but also the most purpose driven investors of the platform. We will use social media and the website to promote these events. And like I said, all of the process of the tickets sold we will go to the nonprofit partners. The following slide presents our most impactful numbers. We've targeted by 2027, which is our fifth year of operations, to achieve 12,000 active members on our platform. We also target to get a revenue of over $10 million in our fifth year of operations. Next, we have our margin figures, with our operating margin in the 50 percentile range and our gross margin in the 60 percentile range. We also aim to have over 13,000 vetted nonprofits on our platform by year five, as well as 60 employed consultants. Lastly, we will need about $300,000 as an initial investment from angel investors to fund our operations as well as our platform. Now, let's step back for just a moment and imagine a world with candor. If Candor took only 0.05% of our target market, we project to connect over 12,000 passionate donors with a vast network of nonprofits by our fifth year of operations. And by 2027, Candor could facilitate over $1 billion of donations to nonprofits doing amazing work around the world. Now, this is the type of business that the world needs today. How could you pass up on an opportunity like that? Thank you so much for your time. It has been our absolute pleasure. So we're going to move into our seven minute Q&A session. Judges, I believe you have two microphones at the table. Um, I believe they also should be on. So whenever you are ready with your questions, you may begin. Thank you. <clears throat> Congratulations on that uh, very attractive uh, presentation. The, um, for the, <clears throat> you are requesting $50 uh, membership fee a month. Um, so what do you get for those $50? Uh, I, didn't, I didn't get the, the presentation here. What's in it for, for, for the members? Well, thank you for clarification. We're going to go back to this slide. 
just to give you an idea of what the app will look like and the services that we provide to the donors. So if you're a donor using the Candor platform, you have access to a vast network of professionally vetted nonprofits. So vetted nonprofits on our platform means that we have a team of vetting specialists that go through and ensure that every nonprofit on Candor's platform is put through rigorous vetting procedures. What does that look like? It's uh, going through the audits of a Form 990 to ensure that all of the economic transparency metrics are put into place. It's also ensuring that every nonprofit that you're donating to is giving you peace of mind and knowing that all the money that you donate is going to the nonprofit and going to actual programs that the nonprofit is doing instead of going to the day to day running of an organization. Thanks a lot for this presentation. I have one question because at the beginning you really stated very clearly that actually people do not believe into uh, those organizations anymore and that's why the giving system was not so uh, successful, let's say. There is one thing I would like to understand in terms of messages and mindset. How are you going to change the mindset around it? Because here for me, I, I see clearly a system that can work, uh, a revenue stream, everything, but in terms of what are the messages to make people start believing it? Thank you so much for your question. Um, so yeah, we will basically go with um, word of mouth and the fact that everyone trusts their network of contacts. So in the platform, moving forward in the future we will be able to have um kind of a friend group and you can see what your friends have donated you can see their experience we we're gonna have reviews as well of certain organizations like oh, i donated to this organization i know how the donation was used so we can see they can review the organization and like their experience the whole experience using the platform so that way we can gain their trust and the fact that also all of our nonprofits are vetted and we know exactly how the donation is being used, that also gives peace of mind to the donors about giving that amount of money to any organization. So yeah, basically is having that traceability, having that transparency that is gonna help them believe and trust that their money is going someplace safe. And then also seeing that your network around you is donating, is making a difference, it will make you like feel, okay, I, if they're doing it, if it's, it worked for them, maybe it can work for me, just as if you were buying any other product. Okay, I understand that part. The, the, the part I was referring to is more, how do you know actually what those institutions are donating, what the donation, what do they do with it? How are you getting to this transparency of it? Because as you know, it's quite hermetic uh, industry. And usually there are big amounts of money that are being talked about, but then the, the split of it and how it's being invested is another story. Exactly. And that was why Candor was really born, because we want to add that transparency level to it. The plan with Candor is that every nonprofit on Candor's platform has agreed to provide yearly reports to the donors to detail how the donation has been used within their organization. Um, it is a um, it's a deal with the nonprofits that we have on our platform that this document is something that they have to provide. And it's one way of providing more transparency to how the money is actually being used for good. Hello. Um, great idea. I just wanted to understand on the principle of the consultant. Um, so I see from the app that you can choose, uh, let's say, the industries or the sectors that you're most interested. How does the consultancy work? And on the, I think you said 10,000 nonprofit organizations. Um, are you aiming to have them all there, or do you have a scope in how many you would like to have on your platform to offer a maximum? Um, you know, choice to your future um, members. Yes. So with our fifth year of operations, it said that we aim to have about 13,000 nonprofits on the platform. So these are all nonprofits that have gone through very rigorous vetting procedures and obliged to very strict standards. So that's a goal that we aim to have. And we feel that 
you know, there's over 10 million nonprofits globally and it's impossible, it's impossible to choose one. So we want to make sure that we're giving our investors the most reliable choice to invest. And that's why it's 13,000. Because realistically, we sat down and thought, you know, how many nonprofits can we vet a day? How many nonprofits can we vet a month? And we based that figure on the amount of nonprofits we can vet per month. Okay. Based on what Amel said before, um, with the fact that there are 13, sorry, 10 million. Um, Excuse me? Based, no. Yes, I'm really sorry. We're going to have to stop the Koreanization. A big thank you for Kendra for your amazing presentation. <laughs> And we're going to pass to our next team. So, Luca, can you come on stage, please? A big round of applause for Luca, please. Faster than ever. And high net worth individuals are seeking opportunities to take full advantage of this new environment. We are introducing Luca Ventures, a modern brand financing firm that differentiates itself by working directly with its customers, the investors, to operate and grow emerging luxury brands in an intimate and transparent way. At Luca Ventures, our goal is for our clients to have access to new opportunities through investing in the next generation of luxury brands. Through our research and analysis, we have determined that our customers who are seeking alternative investments with the transparent and hands-on approach align perfectly with a variety of target companies who are seeking an authentic collaboration to grow. Luca Ventures seeks to facilitate a community of like-minded investors with similar goals for their wealth management strategy. To us, tomorrow's investment strategies are today's. Meet Luca Ventures, the future of emerging luxury brand financing, and invest in a world that never stops moving. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Caleb Mushan, and this is Luis Castaner, and together we make Luca Ventures. So recently, it's been a hot topic to refer to luxury products as investments, but we want to take that a step further and commoditize the companies themselves to offer to high net worth individuals to be able to purchase a stake in um, and then operate through Luca Ventures as an opportunity to have a transparent and hands-on approach to their wealth management strategy. So, like I said, I'm Caleb and this is Luis. We're both passionate about the luxury industry and the future of brand financing. And our goal is to commoditize these companies and offer them as investment opportunities to high net worth individuals so that they can have an interactive way to use the experience that they have, as well as um, a way to grow the future of the luxury industry. So introducing this problem, we've noticed that, especially with high net worth and ultra high net worth individuals, Using traditional um, investment managers and private equity, there is not a industry specific focus as well as lack of transparency in where this money is actually going to be used. We've identified our target client that uh, Luis will go more into depth about, and they are wanting a transparent, luxury focused, and community involved um, investment strategy where each investor for Luca Ventures can work together to grow the, all of the businesses that we work with together. And they're wanting a transparent, involved, and specific um, strategy for their wealth management. So for Customer Target, we've uh, identified um, a couple of clients that are interested in having an impact in the investment in the luxury market. So our firm, what pretends to do is to create a collaborative environment so our clients can know exactly how their money is being used and managed and any time. Also, um, am I doing that? We want to reach out to our um, clients or investors that, that we know, so we can, that also are interested in investing in the luxury sector. So we can build a team of uh, competitive investors that um, are seeking to expand both uh, in capital investment and in um, operation work in the luxury sector. And there's ample data support to support the need for this type of investment strategy, starting with Orion Portfolio Solutions, indicating that 50 per, 54% of investors value opportunity over risk mitigation. And since this is a more um, unique way for people to invest, we see them as our clients as these opportunity seekers. Secondly, Deloitte Investor Survey from 2020 indicated that 70% of investment funds are actively or pursuing investments in fashion and luxury businesses. And lastly, Business of Fashion indicates that not only it is, not only is it the 
investors that are interested in this new way of investing, but also the businesses that we will be targeting. They're seeking profitability and long-term growth over rapid scaling and just expansion just for the sake of it, and then a not scalable future. So the solution, as I mentioned, is identifying a collection of luxury brands looking for sustainable growth that will work directly with our investors and through us, Luca Ventures. Um, and while as we're offering these companies as commodities to the investors, we're creating this community of like-minded but variety of experienced investors that will bring their experience as well as their networking ability to grow the businesses that they are interested in investing in. So we didn't fight too many competitors. The first one are the so-called the market competitors, as you can see here. And those are the largest billion euro venture capital firms who have more expertise and more influence in the market. But those, since they are so big and size and scope, they like uh, direct communication between the investors and the acquisitions that, that, that they made in order to be more transparent. And the second one is the market competitors. And those are more focused on the luxury business uh, venture capital firms who have a deeper, because of their not small size but, uh, on the market, a deeper connection between the investors and the acquisitions that, that they made. And since we are focused also in the luxury market, we found that the second ones are uh, more of a competitors for our um, business market. Also, our business model is going to follow the 220 of the venture capital firm. So we're going to ask a 2% of management fee while the, we're going to take a 20% back of the profit that is, that is going to be reinverted um, in, Vent, uh, in Luca Ventures, and the rest is going back to the main investors. And since we're focused in embracing and established brands that they may need uh, or a viable debt or a need also of, of a consultancy or financing, we are seeking uh, between of 250,000 to 1 million euros to start uh, our operations in, uh, in these investments. Also for the financial indicators, um, following the acquisition of a business, uh, our firm is going to assist and grow that business uh, for a profitable exit in the future. And during the growth stage that we're into, um, our company is going to take a percentage uh, of that profit based on the ability, per, uh, the performance and the equity of the company that we're working on. Also for the sustainability, um, um, the environmental social government is a big factor in, uh, in the business management uh, of the decision making. So our company is seeking to become a B-certified corporation uh, within the five first years uh, of operation. And also, as we can see here in the graphic, 72% uh, of the luxury uh, venture capital focus are willing to become a more sustainable and, and environmentally conscious businesses towards the future uh, investments that, that they're making. So the keys to, access to, the keys to success first is finding the initial investors. We're looking for people who are actively looking for new uh, creative investment opportunities, but also want involvement within their um, investments to create this community that we've discussed. Second is developing this team. And through the team, which is us, Luca Ventures, we really want a conversation and a collaboration be between the investors, ourselves, and the companies that we work with to prosper all of us. And then lastly, the client identification. This is key in the long-term success of Luca Ventures as we want to identify specific companies that align with our investors and our own goals for their businesses, whether that's sustainability or whether that's scalability. Um, and so identifying these clients is also key in the future success of Luca Ventures. So overall, our goal is to create this community of like-minded investors with a variety of experiences to support our acquisitions in a meaningful and involved way. So overall, again, we're excited to present this um, unconventional investment opportunity and hope that you can see how Luca Ventures is the future of brand financing. Again, I'm Kayla Mushan and this is Luis Castaner. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, gentlemen. Fantastic presentation. Uh, so first and foremost, we will be moving into the uh, jury questions, but I'd first like to make an apology to Ms. Bruno. I apologize for cutting you off before. Um, so now, if you guys are ready, we can begin with our questioning. So do we have a first question? Hello. Well Hi. done. How do you find these institutional investors who are happy to um, give you millions of dollars? Um, I've spent probably 10, 15 years trying to target ultra high net worth. How, how do you do it? I mean, first, we are not seeking those amount of millions at the start because that's in an uh, older stage of the company because we first have to start. 
and we plan to reach out or to find those investors through our connections or to the connections of those or through a um, crowdfunding events or a venture capital focused um, groups or events so we can connect with those investors so they can trust us an initial stage so we can grow together both in knowledge and investment how many have you got right now now no none not right none now. No. so you've got so no no presented. no investors in your network so how are you going to find them go I mean, to events we know investors right now in our network but we haven't started operating with them but we already have a and uh, i think also with the biggest part of creating this starting launching phase is finding target companies that align with the goals of our high net worth contacts and the contacts of them to identify if say you're an investor and you're interested in a transparent uh, fashion brand and we find a target for you and pair that and then through that relationship start the initial investing and then as we continue we will get more word of mouth and more recognition with our history and kind of have more of a our say in it first thank you thank you thank you Hello. Hello, thank you for the presentation. I wanted to ask you, what is your competitive advantage that when another investor comes with uh, the similar focus that uh, will not take your investor? Are you saying for what investors or for the companies we invest in? Like what's the secret of the company, the intangible so, thing? Because it seems very easily replicable from, uh, from what your presentation. Yes, so the thing that we really want to emphasize is the transparency and the relationship between the investor and the company. So if you are a high net worth individual wanting to invest in a company directly, you can have that full transparency, but not everyone is wanting the responsibility and the liability of that. So that's why we act as the facilitators to this relationship and provide the opportunity for our investors to use their current experience as well as obviously their money, but to have a continuous involvement throughout the process of, instead of just giving us blindly the money and then us doing what we want with it, we want this relationship to be all the way through from start of investment through the exit process. Thank you. Are you uh, considering like not just the <clears throat> outside the traditional way, like uh, STOs, security token offering, and uh, using the blockchain so that you are really uh, cutting edge initiative, are you? Yeah, well, that is something that we are open to, especially as that is a very new technology. I think it would depend on our initial investors and their comfortability with using blockchain um, for the transparency element. It's a really high advantage, I would say, um, to use that, but it would kind of depend on as we develop our business and maybe five years down the line we could have that opportunity to um, utilize more technologies like that um, but i think it would be up to the initial investors and their comfortability with the technology those stos could help you in cutting down the uh, the length of time mm -hmm. for exiting you know for, for the exit you could <clears throat> you know like a kind of a exchange club of stos i mean i would uh, <clears throat> Sorry, I would have expected something like um, really, as I was saying, cutting edge, something for, for you know the um, that because that would be re really um, um, appealing in terms of uh, this uh, new new concept that you are you are running. I know definitely, and I think that is definitely an opportunity we have. I think the target clients that we have are the ones that are looking for the next stage, the next uh, refresh in their investment portfolio, um, and. As you were saying at the very beginning, every, you should be always changing your interests and always looking for um, the next thing that you're passionate about. And these individuals could be finding new passions and wanting to invest the money that they have in innovative ways in new businesses. And like you said, there's new technologies that we can also use to leverage and speed up maybe the exit process or other stages of that. Exactly. Thank you. I would like to ask you how you will select a company that's uh, where the people will invest. I mean, it, it depends because we have a, a, a analyst in our company that is going to analyze both the previous market and the future market of that company. And after this study, we could in, uh, incorporate that company in our listing of future uh, investment companies. So it depends in how the result of that study of that company is going 
to be and if it's going to be a profitable company in the future or if it's the people or the market is interested in investing in that company and if it's going to be suitable also for our network of investors that if they're willing to invest in that specific company or not. Okay, but do you have already selected any kind of parameters that will be, let me see, let me say, be the magnet to attract then investors? Um, something that is important to us is to provide differentiation within the products and within the luxury um, businesses that we'll be investing in. For Luca Ventures, we want to prioritize the luxury emphasis that we have. And so not only will it be only high luxury and luxury products and services that the businesses that we are investing are in, but more so than just an additional, I don't know, sweater brand or something like that. We really want to emphasize the unique offering that the companies that we invest in will have so that they have the best opportunity for long-term success. Thank you. Okay, it looks like we're good for questions. Thank you. Very Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. I didn't have to come and uh, cut off. Perfect. Beautiful presentation, gentlemen. Thank you very much for that. Uh, all the way from Italy. And so our third team is 8.30 from Polimoda. Come on stage, please. Luxury fashion is losing sight of its DNA. From small family businesses with an emphasis on tradition and quality to global corporations with an emphasis on growth, branding and profits. This has led the luxury world to the mass market and stripped away its true essence. A lot of craftsmanship on which the fashion world was once built is now fading, which is leading to the devaluing of the global craft and the lack of cultural diversity within the luxury marketplace. With research teams spread around the globe, 830 are able to provide luxury fashion houses with an exclusive database of trusted, scarce, artisanal treasures from all corners of the world in the fields of textile and fashion. Through 830, luxury fashion houses can regain their luster, Hello, everyone. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hello, everyone. This is Aya and Lynn from 830. Let me start by telling you a story of how one of the world's most revenue generating industries has transformed over the course of time. Let me tell you the story of the fashion industry. 50 years ago, it all depended on small family-driven businesses with a focus on tradition and quality. Brands like Gucci and Dior, who collaborated with top artisans from all around the world to produce finely made creations, which were produced in-house and uh, sold through their offline stores in Italy and all around Europe. The process was many manually and very effective. 50 years later, the industry is now operated by major corporations with a focus on branding and profit, who produce in less developed countries and mass amounts of productions to reduce their costs. The process, is made, the process is mainly mechanical, amounts are way bigger, and productions are sold online and offline channels. Now in the era of technology, we believe it's time for the next step in the fashion evolution. The market size is huge. There are over 40 million textile industries spread around the globe and over 2,000 top-notch brands who contribute to the textile industry by over 130 billion euros annually. And this number increases 4% year over year. What if we can bridge between both stakeholders? Here comes A30. A30 is a fully comprehensive tech-based tech end-to-end uh, -end, uh, platform that gathers artisans and brands in one place so they can collaborate together. And we empower that with a fully automated back-end engine. A brand logs into our platform and gets access to all the artisans' profiles. And once they like an artisan, once they like the artisan and the contract is signed, we take care of the whole production process from concept 
to completion. But at a certain point, they need further interactivity. They need personalization and they need to communicate more effectively. And this is exactly why we created the fully immersive virtual reality experience in which the brand and the artisan can sit together in one room, even they're in different countries in different continents. Once the collection is produced and released to the stores, we help brands capitalize on the revenues by not just selling online and offline, but by creating an NFT digital version of their creations, which can be sold on the metaverse. And that's a win for the brand and a win for the artisan. Now, what you see here, okay, the artisans you see here are actually artisans we have visited and uh, meted in person who are actually looking forward to collaborate with us on the platform. And to give you a better idea, this is a prototype. Lens switch. This is a prototype which was created by a local community in Calcutta, India the one Lynn is holding, and this is how it would look like on the runway and how it would look like as an NFT. At A30, we aim to bridge the, uh, between the artisan and the brand with a mapping of geographical location with the artisan and the highest concentration of target brands in Europe. We will be adopting four revenue streams, a subscription-based model for our online platform, a commission for our artisan recruitment contract, and a fixed fee plus commission for our project-based contract, and a revenue sharing model for our NFT sold. A30 will reach its full potential within the course of four years. The first year in, in, involves the sourcing of small to medium sized cooperative and workshop. The website will be launched at the end of this stage. The second year involves the sourcing of individual artisan and local communities. An app, a smart, smartphone app will be in, in, introduced. And in the third year, the virtual reality interface is developed. And in the fourth year, the NFT version of the product in, is developed. Our financial forecast reflects amazing potential where we will break even at the end of third year and we will generate our one, first 1 million euro in the second year. We will seek an investment of 1.8 million for, to finance our first and second year's growth. We have already started work and currently in solid talks with top-notch brands like Valentino and LPMH. And we've also been researching local communities of artisans and individual artisans in the Middle East and all around Asia. And what you see here is a testimonial by Alessio Venetti, Chief Brand Officer at Valentino. When asked about the concept of 830, he said that the human resource database is something a brand like Valentino would definitely want to explore. And the idea of the metaverse is very innovative and futuristic. Our team is extremely specialized and experienced and diverse in its background. We do know this is a competitive market with top layers in recruitment, art craftsmanship, and NFT marketplace. But we do have three unique differentiators. The first is diverse price point range. The second is our cultural diversity. And the third is our European aesthetic. At A30, we see the need for embracing sustainable development. After our launch, we will have set guidelines for our artisans to follow. And as we grow in business, we will uh, aim to help our artisans take the form of established businesses to preserve their culture. And after that, we will apply for the following certifications. From our experience and expertise, we believe that 830's impactful and sustainable business model will evolutionize the digital future of the fashion industry and serve as a gateway for our scarce human treasures to the global marketplace. Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. And once again, we will be moving straight into our seven minute Q&A session. So if there are any judges who are ready already with a question, that would be perfect. The timer will start once the first question is asked. Okay, first question is um, very impressive and uh, congratulations on such a, a very nice presentation. <clears throat> Quite impressed by the, uh, the model, the, uh, the concept. What about the uh, environment, about sustainability, about you know, saving the planet? Uh, I didn't see that very much here, but I'm sure that uh, you have that in mind, not you? We, we are actually planning to help, help preserve the crafts that are fading now. So 
after our launch, we because all the, uh, the artisans are only like individual artisans, local communities, so they're not in the form of businesses. So we cannot right away apply like certifications to them. So what we're gonna do is we have guidelines for them to follow. And after like uh, we, they take, we are gonna help them take the form of established businesses to better like preserve their communities and heritage. And after this, we can apply for the certifications. Hi, Hi. Um, fantastic, really uh, <laughs> exceptional. How do you find the artisans? Through the help of uh, ministries of employment and culture in different countries. And also we're going to have volunteers in each country that can help us source the artisans. That's actually what we've been doing for the past few years. And also through like the different initiatives, we're gonna like, um, so we're not just focusing on individual artisans. We're gonna, at the first stage, focus on communities and initiatives. So that's gonna be like easier to find. And later on, we're gonna move to like individual artisans. Well done, very, very good. Thank you. Very nice presentation and idea. I was wondering, um, there's going to be with the smaller artisan different standards of kind of doing business, and you, I think you will have to look into the communication culture and to make sure that the buyers and the artisans are both happy. Do you have any process in place or will you be helping them negotiate every business deal? Yeah, that's actually part of our business. Like we've actually spoken to someone from like, uh, what was the competitor's name? Uh, Officina Kiamenshi is one of our competitors. Yeah, so we've spoken to someone that works for them and she was saying that how hard it is, like it's not as hard, like the hard part is communicating with the artisans. So this is actually where, where, where 830 comes in to help facilitate the communication. So we're always going to be present during the production process. Uh, congratulations, great idea. Something that uh, the luxury business needs in this moment. Uh, I just wanted to ask you why you want to introduce, you know, the app and the metaverse a little bit later and not immediately, you know, because this is something that is happening already. Because uh, like we have to, like our business needs like a like few years for it to, to evolve. So first year we're going to work on building the database. So we need the like the inputs for the metaverse. So the first year we're building the database using like local, we're sourcing um, like workshops. Second year we're focusing on individual artisans. So we need these inputs for to build our metaverse, like the uh, metaverse. So that's why we're taking like time to build it. And also like, uh, we are not just sourcing artisans from all around the world. We are selecting them and training them in order like so a luxury brand they went on to our brand they, the, the artisans are already trained so they can work with them directly hello great idea just one question uh, the language barrier because when you'll be working with small artisans i'm sure maybe they may not master english or they you know they may be within the world how are you going to win that challenge of communication and language barriers we're going to be having like in our model we're having like a senior artisan in every like community to facilitate the communication so we're going to train them so the first year we're just going to train the staff and the artisans and that's like after this we're going to like kick up with the business i hope we can have a few more minutes um which metaverse are you going to be uh, involved with Uh, we will establish our own metaverse uh, platform, own NFT platform to sell our NFT collections. Maybe we will give the customers if they want to uh, launch their NFT to the certain we can a certain metaverse we can help them. But we offer the three D models for each NFT collection. Yeah. We, we are thinking about like uh, creating our own, own NFT marketplace because that is a uh, different, like it's a different with the NFT market, for example, like OpenSea, because like in OpenSea, they have different kind of categories and we want to create an NFT marketplace that is own only for craftsmanship and like luxury fashion brands. So that is our future goal. 
And so you've been speaking with the several brands about uh, this project and uh, uh, what's their feedback about? I mean, are they not concerned about uh, um, giving instructions and probably opening some secrets about production, about how they make works? I mean, no concerns about that, like confidentiality of... Uh, no, we're going to be like signing a non-disclosure uh, like contracts with them and with the artisans. So that. But, but the luxury brands did not raise any issue uh, about because they are quite protective normally now. Yeah, brand we have spoken about it, but as long as we have a con, because we discussed this with several like uh, brands and like uh, they said like as long as we have a contract with them, then it's not an issue. Right. And how do you tackle like the, the problem of fakes uh, or like people that maybe yeah, I mean they signed the NDA, but. No, we're going to try to make sure <laughs> it doesn't happen. <laughs> Great idea. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. That's the last question. What about your name, A30? A30 actually refers to the year 1830, which is like the first arts and crafts movement, like in response to the Industrial Revolution. Wow. You. Thank you. That was wow. <laughs> that's 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 uh, you guys have left me speechless. Congratulations. Um, a fantastic presentation. So with that said, that will close out our first category of students for the Mark Challenge, our top three teams there. And we will be going now into a 15 minute coffee break. So all of you are welcome out on the terrace where we have an open bar. Might I repeat an open bar? Um, so I hope to see all of you out there. Is it mic on? Hold it down and it's going to say no. Uh, now it's muted. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And your feedback. Thank you. Yeah, I have a pas de le rallumer, là je vous l'éteins.
Hello. Hello, everyone. We're going to start in just one minute, so please take your seats. Okay. Yeah. Hello, everyone. We're going to start in one minute, so please take your seat. Okay, welcome back everybody. I hope you guys had a good coffee break. So we're going to get right back into it. We're going to begin with category two, which is MBA alumni and professionals. So this is going to work the same exact way we did before. We will present a one minute video. We will go straight into a six minute presentation and we will be followed by a seven minute Q and A session. So the finalist teams for category two are as follows. Number one is Akimba from France. Round of applause, please. Thank you. Our second team is Emma from Italy and Switzerland. And our third team is RSG Royal Sat Group from the University of Palermo in Italy. And without further ado, we would like to begin by calling the first team up to the stage, which is Akimba from France. I can have the car. I can have the diamonds. I can have the lifestyle. But what I really want is confidence. The confidence to wear all types of colors and be the best version of myself without any awkward moment. Akimba has your back to keep your favorite outfits looking perfect. It is your secret ally for your daily adventures. Live your life to the fullest. We have you covered to keep your cool. My name is Serena Benedetti Roy. I'm the founder of Akimba. And let me start this presentation by telling you the story of this beautiful blouse. A woman called Anna saw it in the shop. She liked the bright color and decided to buy it. She wore it for dinner with friends. And in the evening, when she came back home, she removed the shirt and she saw some deodorant stain on it and it didn't smell very well. She looked at the instruction tag and it says dry cleaning only. Of course, it's designer shirts, it's always like that. So she waited a few days and took it to the dry cleaner. This is the first hassle. Over there, the shirt went into a giant washing machine full of chemicals because it's called dry cleaning, but it's not dry at all. It's just there is no water, only chemicals. 
Then Anna went back to pick up the shirt and she had to carry the hanger back home. That's second hassle. She removed the plastic cover and put it in the garbage. So this creates a lot of waste. So we have to wash our clothes when we have food stains or just to freshen them up. But it's such a source of pollution and a hassle and a pity to wash an entire blouse just for a few perspiration stains. The shirt of Anna, after a few times of doing this cycle of dry cleaning and picking it up and washing again, uh, it loses spark and it became a bit tarnished. So one day she looked at it and thought, well, I could sell it for 10 euro on Vinted, but this is not worth the effort at all. So she just gave it away to charity. And it's a pity. So I'm in Akimba is introducing a new concept. It's a premium lingerie that prevents perspiration stains on your outfits. It enables to keep your outfits looking perfect. It is an innovative project because it's the first time that we can combine a lingerie product that can not only support the breasts, but also conceal perspiration. The patent application is ongoing. It's made with a luxury Italian fabric and it's high quality craftsmanship. The fashion designer, the patent maker, and the development factory in France uh, are all specialized in luxury lingerie and technical products. And icing on the cake, it's eco-friendly. While most lingerie that is second skin and zero fill is made with standard polyamide, and all thermoregulating t-shirts are made from polyester, Akimba is made from a biosourced material. It's made from plants that grow in arid area and have no impact on the food chain. There are a few competitors to Akimba. First, there are the solutions to avoid sweating. There are some major procedures that destroy or paralyze the sweat glands. And there are some chemicals products available over the counter that can work for a few days. And then there is another type of solutions that are perspiration concealing products. So first, you can have some pads that you have to stick into your shirt and are disposable. Or there are some t-shirts that are mainly designed for men. And the nearest competitor is a brand called Numi. It's a Canadian brand that designed feminine t-shirts. There is no one on this branch of um, premium lingerie. The product is the product, but there is more to it. There is really a mission be behind Akimba. We want women to feel comfortable in their own skin and be the best version of themselves all day, every day. We have different customer persona. So for some of them, we'll ask uh, the communication more on comfort and impact on the environment. And we target them through personal shoppers or retailers. And for younger targets, uh, younger personas, we'll ask the communication more on the self-confidence and to remove the hassle of the cleaning of clothes. And we target more of them through social media. The business model is very straightforward. About 70% of the sales will be done direct to consumer through the online website. The remaining 30% will be done through retail. So there will be uh, high-end department stores, lingerie shop, and concept stores, online and offline. 1% of the turnover will be donated to some association that have an impact to empower women as part of the company mission. Regarding the financials, the initial investment is $100,000, uh, euro, sorry. <laughs> this covers uh, the research and development and uh, the patent application or marketing fees and the initial stock. So, 
with a target of uh, 7,000 pieces sold over the first 15 months, the return on investment is expected on the second year. Now, if I go back to this uh, nice blouse with Akimba, it would have had a very different story. So Hannah would have worried many more times and felt confident every time. She would not have to, to worry about stressful situations. And uh, at the end of uh, the day, she would have taken it to dry cleaning, but much less. And also she could have sell it on website like Vestia Collective and give it a second life and increase the circularity in fashion. Akimba wants to change the way women wear clothes. And our promise to them is live your life to the fullest. We have you covered to keep your cool. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you very much. So with that said, we will be moving into, again, our seven-minute Q&A session, uh, which will begin as soon as the first question is asked. So please, the floor is yours. May I ask uh, the price of the product? It will be 90 euro, tax included. So that's the level of uh, a premium bra. Um, very good, well done. Okay. Got a good presence on stage. Uh, I was just wondering about the marketing and the figures, 100K, is that really realistic uh, for R&D and marketing? Um, I, I'm very expensive uh, digital agency, and the hundred k wouldn't get you anywhere. Um, so I don't, I don't know. Maybe you've got better better suppliers or, or cheaper suppliers. Uh, but to make those four hundred sales in that first year, um, you're gonna have to spend a fair bit. Um, and also, what's your cost of sales? Yeah, so the cost of sales is about 30% of the product. That's including the, the marketing. How do you know that? Well, it's a forecast. Okay. But I, I might not be able to afford your service from <laughs> No, 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 I understand. Uh, I have a few brands myself, and they end up costing 1,000% uh, to start with because no one knows your brand, so it's quite difficult to... to to get people uh, to buy it. <laughs> yes. um, so yeah, you might have to look at your uh, your your figures um, just to get the ball going, but generally well done, great products and uh, good luck with it. Thank you. And also the fact that it's technical, it brings something, it's not just a new fashion accessory, a new piece of lingerie, it's an innovation. So uh, I already got a feedback that people want to talk about it. They want to talk about new things and want to promote things that don't exist yet. So I also rely on this to, to help in the, in the marketing. So thank you for this presentation. Um, I was actually quite surprised that you decided to go for like 70% online and 30% retail mm -hmm. because you would manage like much easily the supply and demand being just online. And I was wondering if you have like any structure in mind of what the retail would look like, if it's existing structure or, so the question is why this kind of uh, structure and if there is any process or any thought behind. Yeah, so uh, why it's 70, 30 and not the opposite, basically 70 online no, and 30 even, retail, why, why is this figures? Online? Yeah, okay. or just the, the, the scheme basically, 30, 70, why not only online or just retail or? Yes, so at the basis, I wanted to go fully online and to avoid a uh, cost of retail because retail costs a lot and the margin ask are uh, very high. So I, I want to focus first online to make sure that I have money for the marketing actually. And then once uh, it's getting started, so after a few months to start the retail and retail, uh, the difficulty is also the cash flow. So because supply, um, supplies of customers, they will pay a bit later and they don't pay straight away. Online, uh, you get the cash straight away. And uh, this is much easier to manage the cash flow. So that's why it's a high number of percentage on the direct, direct to consumer. So would you go to new retail shops or would you go to existing one or what is the... 
So what the do you idea, have in mind on the yeah. retail side? <laughs> the idea is to go to uh, big department stores. So for example, in Paris, uh, Bon Marché, where they are really looking for new trends and new products. And also uh, some concept stores, like things where they sell different things, where they can sell fashion and also uh, uh, lifestyle product. Uh, concept stores where they sell new things. And also lingerie shop. It's something that still exists in a lot of cities. Uh, so where people go for advice on what type of underwear they should wear and where they have special need to, uh, to have some underwear for a special occasion and to wear with special type of clothes. Um, great presentation. Just one question. You're saying obviously the shirt after you've washed it a few times, it's either given away or sold. Uh, the principle that this lingerie will be washed on a, almost a daily basis because it's taking the, the, the everything of it. What's the durability of the product? Mm. How many you know? How many washes you expected to keep its strength, its sustaining, its comfort, and everything? Yeah. Because obviously, it's not a cheap product. Yeah. So. It can be washed on a daily basis and then keep its properties, so that's not a problem. And it can last many years, uh, even being used on a daily basis. So normally, uh, it's not meant to be used every single day. It's more when there is a special occasion, like to go for a presentation, for, for example, or when you wear like uh, materials that uh, get stained very easily. Uh, so it's not... For some people who sweat a lot, it could be on a daily basis, but it's more something that you have in your wardrobe and that you will take the day you need. Uh, just like you can have sometimes like a longer underwear to wear under a dress, uh, or you will have like a this sleep dress to, to wear when it's a bit sheer color. So it's not the idea to, to, to wear it every single day, but uh, it, it's very lasting. Just one thing, I might have missed it, but what does it look like? I wish I could show it today, but uh, for intellectual property reasons, I cannot, unfortunately. And uh, for the, the patent application, uh, if you show it to, to an event like that, then you cannot patent anymore because according to French law, it, it has to be new. That means never shown before. So, yeah. But what I can, I can do, I can uh, show you a sample of the fabric so you can have a feeling of uh, how, it, how it tastes. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Uh, how you decide this kind of positioning? Because uh, you make a very good analysis of the competition because you would also bottles, you know, this kind of element that's mm -hmm. it's uh, a lot of people does, you know, for the sweating uh, problem. Yeah. And why you decide just so as this is a problem that many people have, you know, why you decide to make it just a luxury positioning or you know, maybe a wider one or? Well, what exists today is mass market product. You know, I, I don't talk about the Botox and chemicals, but just in terms of product, there is a lot of, not a lot, there are a few mass market products and they are not targeted to women. So they are not appealing. I don't want to wear this product, for example. I wear a nice blouse. I want something that do the part, that match my outfits and I want to feel good in it. I don't want to put it on like I have a disease or because I don't have a disease. And I, I want something that makes me feel good. So that's why I think women want to feel good all day and they need, deserve a product that that is beautiful and put to the part. Okay, um, thank you very much. That's all the time we have for questions today. I'm so sorry. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you to the judges again for all of your really good questions. Thank you to Team Akimba. Uh, fantastic presentation. And with that said, we'll be moving on to our second group, who is? Ema.
Thank you very much. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Marcantonio Caporale, and I will be presenting HEMA today. Before starting with the presentation, just as a side note, I would like to tell you that all the cabins pictures that I will be showing in this presentation are copyright protected and our own design. So um, I'm co-founder as EMA uh, as, uh, with Mark Tosi, Luca Galeno and uh, Paolo Danesi. Uh, we have skills in the fields of hospitality, engineering and um, architecture. Um, we are here also thanks to our advisor and our partners uh, that have been supporting us along the way. So thank you very much to those two. I will be uh, talking about um, a problem on two sides. When it comes to um, travelers and tourism, uh, the offer is moving, uh, the, the, demand, uh, the demand is moving faster than the offer is. Uh, Today, what used to be niches, such as sustainable travel, outdoor travel, and wellness travel are now major brands. And the current hospitality brands are, um, are, are now uh, very strong trends, I was saying, sorry. Uh, and now the actual brands, um, they really struggle to move along and give a proper authentic offer. On the other side, we have um, landowners like Tawanda Moyo owning extensive uh, lands in the Masai Mara reserves. We have uh, companies such as Jeje Le Coute, the bespoken watchmakers in, um, from the Richmond Group in Switzerland. And we have local stakeholders as Val Verzasca in uh, beautiful Ticino. What have those trees in common? Well, they are our first customers for once, and for second, they have an heritage to protect and value. And they really are torn. Uh, they want to empower local communities and they want to open their heritage to tourists. But they struggle to do so because they are torn apart in the trade-off between conservation and development. At the same time, they struggle to, um, to interact with the uh, um, numerous stakeholders you will need to deal with when doing hospitality developments. And that's when EMA comes to play. We develop and manage, uh, and manage sustainable light footprint resorts uh, in pre that can be put in pristine location. We have been inspired by the model of cabins building, which are present in the Scandinavian and uh, Canadian culture to be able to retreat rustically in nature. And we took this at, um, in the luxury uh, market. So, how, how do, can we deliver excellence by curating the whole value chain? This means that we design and we develop the buildings ourselves. They can be tailor-made for each location. We take care of all the hospitality operations and we take care also of all the retreats and um, activities that goes into place. We really focus on long stays for our guests, allowing them to really tap into the authenticity of their locations. Sustainability is the backbone of our offer. Um, thanks to the fact that we take care of all the value chain, also sustainability starts from the very first steps with our feasibility studies and life cycle assessment for each location. All our cabins they can come with an, uh, and developments come with upgrade options, so um, they can be put in the most remote locations of our planet, and um, we have a light footprint policy, which means using no concrete and being able to set up and remove our resorts in a few weeks time without leaving any traces. We have a circular approach and we really are um, very focused on preserving local heritage. We do this through farm to table, sourcing only with a 50 kilometers radius of where we are present. Uh, and also uh, training local staff and putting local uh, activities with locals at the center of our offer. Actually, we think about our cabins at rooms, but the hotel is not a fenced resort. The hotels needs to interact with what is around. Also, we have an ongoing research and development commitment 
Just now, uh, we are working with the um, Inno Swiss Agency in uh, the federal government of Switzerland, and we have been granted uh, 1,500 um, Swiss francs to be able to develop with academias new technologies for our wooden buildings to withstand extreme humidity conditions ecologically. When it comes to our positioning, um, we need to deal with, of course, uh, the big players in the hospitality market. Um, they tend to deal with sustainability only once they're built with best practices and they lack these um, initial steps that we're having. And they tend to have a very heavy footprint in the location where they roll out. Also, uh, there are some hotels who already use cabins, but they have no ambition for scalability and their model is not replicable. And also there are the experienced providers that lack infrastructures. When it comes to our revenue model, our main revenue streams are um, the ones that come from the developments, which are around 10% of the whole development investment, uh, but also the ongoing management fee of the 15%. Um, our uh, model is a B2B2C. So it means that um, we are the one taking care of the tourists through our management service but our main customers are, as I was saying, landowners, um, companies, and local entities and public entities. On the financial side, um, I want to uh, show a bit um, a few of our uh, key performance indicators. When it comes to the development time, we tend to stay in the one-year time for the old developments, which is very fast for the standards of the hospitality industry. Our cabins, um, even if they are uh, on the um, on the, on the on the luxury segment, as showcased by our shooting star cabin in this um, in this picture, they come with a moderate pricing around seventy thousand uh, dollars per unit, and also our flat packing allows us to ship globally and to have a global footprint. Also, thanks to our web of um, local of local carpenters. The research, uh, the, the return on investment of our current project, it's uh, forecasted at about 20 to 30%. And uh, as said, we see a very high potential for scalability. Um, when, when it comes to our path so far, um, we have now the endorsement, as I said, of the Swiss Innovation Agency. Um, UBS is supporting us with a tailor-made leasing uh, product for our cabins. Um, and we are part of the EHL Innovation Village, of which we are alumni. Um, we have been working uh, with Valverzaska, with Gégé Le Courte in Switzerland, um, and are rolling out a project in Costa Rica and Kerala in the next year, and also in Siena and Tuscany. And we are now uh, working with a major uh, cruise ship brands for pop-up locations um, in remote locations. Um, thank you very much. If you know an heritage to value, come to us. Wow. Beautifully done. Thank you very much for thank that. You. And so again, we'll be moving on to our questions. The timer will begin when the first question is asked. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Congratulations for the presentation and also for this kind of project that uh, there is a need of, for something new, different. And I like the concept of pop up also, you know, which is coming from retail and in hospitality can be something disruptive. So it's very good. Um, I'm not sure about the financial structure in some way, you know, because uh, there's a lot of that has to be done before, in, you know, and during and after. So how it will work, you know, like the management of the of these, uh, of these hotels, uh, how many units you can implement? Uh, do you establish a minimum number of cabins that you need to have in uh, each locations? Uh, 
how you will provide the standards uh, in all locations of this kind of element. Yes, so uh, thanks to our background in consultancy, that's of course all the uh, work that we provide with SOPs and uh, we have the, the competencies to, to deal with, um, with all these questions. You asked many questions, so I'm going to answer one and please remind me of the others. Um, when it comes to the number of cabins, we usually uh, always select developments with up to 25 cabins. However, for example, for uh, Coutre, close to Geneva, we are just doing a three units project, but this is very uh, high end and tailor made project. So it really depends. We we kind of um, are nimble and try to be flexible around uh, what needs to be delivered. Uh, standards for uh, operations? Yes, um, like what is needed to operate the cabins. Mm -hmm. I uh, mean, you should have a stand. I'm, I work in the hospitality, you know, you must have a stand, you know, quality standards, uh, service, et cetera, et cetera. Yes. Right? So we take care of all the pre-opening and uh, we, uh, we already have, um, we already have a list of staffing that needs to be employed. And also we have our consultants for FMB. So for each of our departments, we have uh, already um, people that we are working outsourced for now, because of course we cannot employ everyone, but that's also thanks to our very vast network in the field. So we, are, we have a lot of those competencies that come and that help us. Uh, question on, uh, on, on numbers. Uh, you're saying 10% uh, management fee and 15% uh, another fee for the for the so for the, the, all the marketing revenue management and um, and an operation we ask around the 50% and the 10% if the if for development for development it's based 15% on the cost of that marketing uh, spending or is it uh, or are you are your fee based your fees based on uh, on turnover the from the from the result itself they are based on the turnover so and then you're saying you are expecting a, a return on investment of 20, 20 to 30 percent but what about if the operator is not doing a very good business and and 10 percent on almost nothing for instance uh, how do you do that well, we are the operators, so we better do a very good business because you will be running the. Uh... Yes. Oh, sorry. I yes, thought you were because selling... we take care of all the management service. So we we we, we take care of all the pre-opening part with the development and the designs. We do the pre-opening and then we do the ongoing management. So we really create the whole value chain. Okay, so you're looking for investors that are going to bring the the seed money for the seventy thousand per unit, for instance. Yes, right. and usually it's the same landowners okay. to which we're providing a turnkey solution. So they pay for the uh, for the, the yes, investment. and you do the, good the operation, job and we better do a good job. And yes, you better do a good job. Great, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. I wanted to ask you: Do you have one prototype or one standard that you're using? Because I can imagine everybody's going to ask to have it a little bit different because they want to uh, kind of differentiate themselves. And a second question is how long this cabin can, uh, what's the durability? And uh, how do you handle water? Wow, this is, I, I'll try to remember the, all the three questions. If I forget one, ask me again, I'm not avoiding them. Um, so um, the, the quickest to answer is um, water. Well, we use, um, we either use water tanks, we collect rainwater for the off-grid models. Whereas uh, for the on-grid model, we just plug them to the network. We, we try also to use locally wells um, and, uh, and do that. When it comes to the cabins, we prototyped uh, the Mountain Refuge, which is the first cabin on the first slide, the slide in India. Um, and uh, we are noticing that people really like tailor-made. So we usually tend to do different models for every location. Um, and then there was a third question, help me please. Durability. How long? No? Durability. How long it lasts? Oh yes, um, around eighty years. This is what we can uh, grant. Um, there is a misconception around wooden buildings, but if you happen to travel to Japan, for example, you can see temples that are there since three thousand years. So it's really about the techniques that you use. For example, we use a lot of burned wood, yagisugi, and other um, craftsmanship kind of tricks and techniques. 
Hello, uh, congratulations for this presentation. You. you mentioned the fact that you're aiming um, to focus for long vacation time, but we know that today vacation is not as it used to be. So does that mean you're focusing on those people that maybe don't need or can take a lot of time off or how are yes. you going to maybe also focus on those people that really like um, outdoors and would like to maybe enjoy vacation somewhere in this world? that can't afford two, three, four weeks off. So this was a hard choice to make. Actually, I haven't been talking a lot about all the wellness part that was present on the video and so on, but we really aim to deliver transformative experiences. And you cannot do this in 48 hours. It, if it's on a short time, a transformative experience is a trauma. It's not a transformative experience. So uh, this is why our choice is to target at least in weeks of course, there's also a financial strategy because we don't want them to be full by the weekend and empty during the week, but we really want to tailor make experiences around the cabins. Cabins are just a part of the framework. Okay, so unfortunately, that's all the time we have for questions. Thank you very much, Emma. Thank you very much to the jury. Beautiful. So the presentations are going absolutely beautifully today, better than they have, I think, uh, in a very long time. But with that being said, we will be going to our third and final group in category two, and they are RSG, the Royal Sat Group. Thank you, everyone. Today, with the new satellite antenna, we are developing that will provide fast internet worldwide. Uh, through technology, we are going to increase security on board of super yacht and commercial ship, uh, reduce pollution and consumption of fuel, and um, enhance owner and crew welfare. Look at this slide. Today, we have uh, um, navigation, audio video, entertaining system, equipment, cyber security services, internet. All these topics are related and correlated to each other and are depending on internet. Um, there are two gap, two main gap today in the market. First, despite all these services are correlated, they're related to each other. Um, there is not one company that is providing altogether these services. And there is always a rebound of responsibilities between these, company, these companies. Second, despite the evolution of the internet at land, today uh, at sea, internet is still uh, very expensive and the speed is very low and the equipment to get the internet is uh, still very expensive. The solution could be us. We would like to become the company, the sole reference for the technology on board, thanks to this antenna that we are developing. Uh, the target clients are, of course, <clears throat> high net worth individual yacht, ultra high net worth individual yacht, but also this model is applicable to all the solar vessel because the regulation that the, uh, the super yacht are complying is uh, the same of the solar vessel. So uh, to go uh, a bit uh, uh, deeply on the services that we want to, to offer all together. First of all, for sure, internet services. Uh, today, 
um, especially in the recent years, the internet is uh, uh, incredibly uh, um, uh, exploiting uh, as well on board of the yacht. Um, you have, we have to think about entertainment, Netflix, Apple TV, all the contexts today are uh, in uh, true internet. And after COVID, we made a step up of 10 years in digitalization. Um, today, the owners, and I speak by my personal experience, they are spending the double of the time on board and they are asking the double of the bandwidth. Cybersecurity services. If we increase the bandwidth on board, we need to increase cybersecurity. All our life are inside our, our devices. Uh, today, internet is still slow. The demand of cybersecurity is still low. IMO, the International Maintenance Organization, just recently said that the ship over 500 gross tons, they have to have mandatory cybersecurity on board. We will develop this. Third, the route weather services. Today, there is the autonomous drive uh, at land, and there will be the autonomous and uh, remote control uh, uh, also uh, on board of the ship. Um, through internet, we can provide the a voyage optimization, we can reduce fuel consumption and pollution. Fourth, accounting authority and security services. This could be long. We have to consider that today all the uh, wheelhouse, all the navigation instruments are paperless on board of the yacht. It means that uh, these uh, charts are updated and uh, by internet. These accounting authorities companies just, they certificate the equipment, they don't provide internet. And this is still, uh, a conflict. And the, the jewel in uh, our business is this new, new antenna. Today, you have, you have to consider that uh, uh, despite the evolution of uh, internet at land, there is not a cable that is connected to the yacht. When the yacht is in the, in the middle of the oceans, still the maximum uh, speed that they can reach is uh, 512 kilobyte per second. That is very low. And the cost roughly to have internet on board is around 100,000 of euro. We are, we are developing a beta testing this antenna that they will provide globally, worldwide, 200 uh, megabytes per second of speed. And this uh, will be a revolution uh, uh, in the maritime market. Uh, just uh, considering the figures for the uh, marine market, um, almost 30 billion of dollars. And the, the rate uh, of uh, uh, growing is 10% uh, each year. We have some partners that are uh, supporting us, some important partners as well. Just yesterday, we closed a deal with a USA company that provides cybersecurity. They invented a um, tool for uh, cybersecurity, and we will be the distributor in uh, the maritime market. There, are, uh, there is Starlink. There are other companies that are supporting us. We are proud about this. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. So with that said, we will be going in again to our seven minute Q&A. The timer will begin when the first question is asked. Hi, well done. Uh, seems quite a breakthrough. Isn't anyone else doing this? Not yet. Uh, today, owners are asking me or clients to install the antenna, the land antenna on board. It's not working. Uh, if, if they are docked, it's working. But if they are sailing, it's not working because uh, it's not able to compensate the movement of the vessel to uh, uh, track the heading and the satellite. So we are developing this type of tools for this antenna. And in the middle of the sea, in the Atlantic, yeah. there aren't any owners on board, are they? They, they just come on board at Club San Consang. They don't really go very far, or do, do they? No, well, they do that as well, but a, a part super yacht that in any case, they spend the season in the Met, the summer season, and the winter season in the Caribbean, or I have clients that they are going worldwide. There are all the commercial ships that they, they are selling every day. And the crew still needed to see the picture of the son, to speak with the wife, no, to, the, to enhance the wealth. Okay, fair enough. And um, so how are you going to find uh, the customers 
um, to give them the, this better antenna? And do they have to take their antenna off and, and, and add a new one? Is there a lot of extra cost? Do they have to go back to the shipyard or the refit yard? Our business model is both B2B and B2C. We expect that the existing fleet there, you have to consider that there is a, there are around 6,000 yachts above 30 meters in the world, and um, they are always refitting, uh, improving, increasing technology on board. And just uh, speak up, speaking about Italy, there are 1,024 1, uh, yachts under construction. And uh, as I told you, I already, already receiving a request for this antenna. And uh, I think that as soon as it will be ready, we are beta testing. Uh, the demand will be higher. The demand will be higher. Thank you for this presentation. What is the timing? What do you have in mind in terms of? Because uh, look, I understand uh, before, you were uh, uh, the war was uh, this summer. Maybe in September we will we will be ready uh, because the war uh, some satellite some satellite has been postponed the launch. It. And some other items be it has been uh, moved above Ukraine. So um, we have just to postpone for uh, one year, hopefully. And the financial model? Sorry? Financial model? Financial model, um, we are uh, from the information that we have from the market, from the existing market, we will uh, reduce the cost for the hardware for the yacht and we will make money from the services like cyber security that today is a, there is not cyber security in front of the yacht so this the money will come from the services okay do we have more questions or maybe i have one more question how many so what is the cost of actually the one antenna that for one ship we are uh, discussing this and uh, let's say that if today to have a, a full equipment on board to receive a transmit internet you have to spend 100 000. the cost uh, could be around the 15 000, but uh, we are still discussing this and you have invested in your own satellite? Did I understand that correctly? No, no, no. The, the satellites are not mine. Yes. Uh, we are investing in the equipment okay. to get the Because I wanted to ask you the... how many antennas do you have to sell to cover a satellite? So now it makes sense. Thank you. No, for total, someone else has launched the satellite for us. Okay. It looks like that's it for questions. So thank you very much to our jury. And thank you very much, RSG. Very well done. Perfect. So now it's time for the first award ceremony of the day, the special award ceremony. So we are going to start with the special award in yachting. And first, let me thank our outstanding special award in yachting jury panel once more. A round of applause, please. Thank you. So let's have a look at the nominees. Thank you.
The special award in yachting is proud, very proudly sponsored by the Yachting Ventures, as well as in partnership with the Monaco Yachting Cluster and Young Professionals in Yachting Monaco. The winner will be awarded a fully sponsored spot on Yachting Ventures next acceleration program, as well as access to all of the support, mentorship, and community resources offered via the Yachting Ventures platform. Please welcome Mrs. Gabriella Richardson, founder of the Yachting Venture, who is joining us online today. Round of applause, please. Hi, everyone. Um, it's a pleasure to be here, um, although virtually. Um, yeah, so Yachting Ventures, we are very proud of sponsors of the Mark Challenge. So this is the second year running. Um, for those of us, for those of you who don't know, um, who we are. So we're an accelerator specifically for the leisure marine yachting and super yachting industries. We've now um, ran three cohorts and worked with over 70 startups. Um, so it was amazing to see the quality of the applications that came through the mark this year. Um, and it's wonderful to see so many passionate, young, ambitious people um, looking to bring innovation to this space. So yeah, Monaco is obviously an important yachting hub and um, yeah, we're, we're very proud to support um, the Mark and, and what you guys are doing here. Thank you, Ms. Richardson. Um, unfortunately, we can't see you. Well, there, uh, there we go. Um, <laughs> my goodness. Hi. It's a pleasure to finally see you. We heard everything you said, though. Um, so thank you. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure for, to, to be working with you. Thank you. And it's also an absolute pleasure to have all of your support. So thank you so much, Ms. Richardson, for everything. And next, we would like to call on stage Mrs. Claudia Bacciani, who is the project leader at Monaco Capital of Advanced Yachting, as well as Mr. Gregory Benassi, uh, project leader at the Monaco Yacht Club, who would like to come on stage to say a few words. Thank you very much. We are very proud to be here today and especially in front of all these young people that will be the yachting of tomorrow and hopefully a yachting with sense. So thank you so much. Thank you, Claudia. It's several years now that we are, we are partners with the IUM and we are very proud to be, to be again a partner of the Cluster Yacht in Monaco. We have several members that are supporting the IUM. We have several members that are really acting uh, very close to the Yacht Club, to, to the IUM. So thanks again for, for all of you, for, for your support. And we by the way, I would like to thank again Camille Lopez of a high plug because she has just signed our charter engagement charter so she's on board on this nice project so we really count on you thank you Camille. Camille is a real example of of a success for for a project that have win have been winner last year Camille am, am I right so we we work Double. together in Dubai we work together on several destinations and several projects I'm, I'm really proud to present the winner every year of the of the IUM Mark Challenge. So this year we are again partner and, and we will work together so several years. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we'd like to keep uh, our two fine speakers on stage and we'd like to ask Mr. Gregory Banassi to present the award and the motivation for the special award in Yannick. So there is no doubt that co-ownership takes the daily frustration out of your ownership, while it's also lowering the initial cost of purchase and associated maintenance costs for owners. The team is embracing the trend via the use of tokenization, which will offer an ace flexibility and allow customers to swap and sell their wigs on board. The, uh, this added flexibility should encourage more entrants into the market and will likely provide a great stepping stone for charters looking to take the next step towards as tassel free ownership. Sorry. And and the winner, the winner is Yachting One. So please come on stage. Congratulations. 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 Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Oh, 
What a handsome looking group. Beautiful. Okay. Thank you so much. Congratulations to Yachting One. You guys stay on stage because we do have a one minute video to present from Yachting One, as well as a quick four minute presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, if you have seen in our uh, short video that uh, you see immediately that yachting is about passion, it's about luxury, it's about uh, pleasure. However, the ownership of a yacht most of the time for owners gets quite a bit painful and frustrating. They have to take care of the management, they have to take care of the administration, and also even more, they have to pay all the running costs for the whole year just by themselves. And the question is, is this all needed just for a couple of weeks per year? On the other side, if you ask the yacht owners why they only want to own a yacht, they understand the advantages. It's about their freedom, their privilege, and their privacy. And that's why we ask ourselves, why not combine the advantages of being a yacht owner with the advantages of being a charter guest on board? And we have created Yachting One, the new way of yachting. With Yachting One, we're implementing Yacht Ownership Weeks. Yacht Ownership Weeks means that Every uh, the best 20 weeks of the season between May and September can be acquired by a yacht owner. Um, and each week is representing 5% ownership of the yacht and the specific right to use the yacht in that time. In order to make the acquisition and the transfer as simple as possible, the ownership and the usage rights will be tokenized and we're using the advantages of blockchain technology. With our yacht ownership weeks, our owners can buy their preferred week, they own the yacht, but they only have to pay for the use. They don't have to pay for the unused time. On the other side, they don't have to think and worry about everything. Everything will be done by Yachting One. Furthermore, since most of the costs in yachting are fixed, um, now they will be divided between the several co-owners. And with the help of tokenization, we are making the uh, weeks um, even more fungible because now they can be used they can be swapped, they can be made uh, like a gift to the family or friends, and they can even be chartered out via us, via Yachting One. Yachting One offers a service from A to Z so that yachting owners can focus and enjoy their time on board. And um, as we want to make the ownership as simple as possible, also the way how to get into yachting shall be as simple as possible. So it will be an easy way to acquire the rigs an easy way to select your yacht, to select um, the preferred area, and also how to use it or to swap it. And uh, Yachting One is also combining the advantages of the current existing uh, yachting models at the moment. At the, on the one side, a Yachting One owner owns a yacht, like as if you would own your sole yacht. But on the other side, you take over the role of a charter guest. So there is no hassle of management for you. And even that, Everyone knows yachting is not about a uh, financial aspect, it's the emotional link to the yacht. But also our model makes uh, is quite attractive from a financial perspective because you see this beautiful uh, bearing 72. 
it would cost you 4.5 million just if you buy it yourself. However, our yacht co-ownership week starts from 250,000 euros per week. And therefore, with Yachting One, with our unique combination of tokenized co-ownership and an innovative new time-sharing model, we want to target a new generation of yachting owners, them who like to own a yacht, but on the other side, they don't want to worry and take care of the management. But also on the other side, the focus is on yachting owners who wants to release capital, who wants to sell some of the charter yacht owning weeks instead of chartering out their yacht. Our target group is, uh, the global target group is 50 million high net worth individuals between two to 10 million around the world and 3% approximately are interested in yachting. So our direct target group are approximately 1.5 million high net worth individuals. And uh, as a starting point, we want to start with our first year, uh, first yacht, end of this year, begin of next season um, in Palma in Spain, and then slowly, slowly um, expand into the other yachting hotspots in the Mediterranean area, but also in the near future into the Caribbean or Southeast Asia. And uh, our Yachting One concept is unique. Also the team behind is unique. It's a combination of people from uh, the yachting industry, entrepreneurs, and also blockchain experts. And thank you very much for today. And we welcome your board. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Congratulations again on the special award in yachting. And thank you, Mr. Benassi, for handing that out. Ladies and gentlemen, now would typically be the time that we move on to our next special award. But we have a surprise for you this year because the difference between first and second place for the special award was so close, it was just one point, that the yachting jury decided to give a special mention award to our second place for the special award in yachting. And so please welcome to the stage again, well, he's already still here, but Mr. Gregory Benassi, who will be presenting the special mention award for the 2022 yachting award. Yo. Just before you start, Claudia, we want really to uh, enhance this kind of project. Thank, congratulations to, to all participants, but as a capital of advanced yachting, our aim is really to enhance innovation, enhance sustainability, and this is really what we want to achieve with your help. So please do not hesitate to make appeal to Claudia. Claudia, she is there to, to help all the companies in yachting, of course, but we are happy to help all the companies if they need to. But for young generation, for next generation sustainable project, please sustain our project of capital of yachting, advanced yachting, sorry, I forgot the most important Advanced. word. So thank you. Thank you so much, sorry. Thank you, Gregory, absolutely. So, um... This is the special award in yachting motivation. Yacht maintenance is a huge segment of the broader market and the procurement of parts associated with maintenance is yet to undergo a full digital revolution. Customers want to purchase products easily and with confidence and the project is leveraging the e-commerce mobile first trend. And the winner is Boat Dock from IUM. Congratulations. Congratulations. Good afternoon, everybody. Today with Giovanni Lovati and Andrea Boni, we'll be presenting Bodoc. 
We have recreated the size of the yachting industry. The market value is almost 29 billion in 2019, and it expects it to be 2027 almost 35 billion. And as an average, we have a customer that spends almost 10% of the boat value uh, in maintenance. So if we take in consideration the value of 2019, we have 2.9 billion in maintenance. For this reason, we have also calculated that a customer uh, as an average spends 30 minutes in finding the right product for the right solution for the boat at a spare part, as well as the mechanic that receives the, the wrong order one out of six times. For this reason, we have decided to create Boat Dock, which is a marketplace based on a website and an app that is a marketplace for specify for your boat that can also sell uh, both parts and it's also a retailer. And it helps you to save time and money. But how does it help to save time and money? Through the use of the identification number. With this identification number, you have access to all the lists of products available. They are 100% compatible with your boat, as well as you have access to a detailed explanation of the product. And we have also the access to a video tutorial that help you to write the right product in the right place in your boat. The application is based on three main portals. You have the first one where you can put the model and the brand of your boat and all the specification, as well as the second with all the categories that can be propellers, fenders, and engines, as well as the product list that offers all the product available with your boat and can be the best uh, product for you. A boat dock works with a wide range of boats from a small one to big yachts that can be maximum 30 feet, as well as a wide range of customers that can be from young age to adult age. And we want to offer the, 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 the most simple model that we can have, and we want to offer efficiencies in business to our customer. So our ideal customer is going to be obviously someone with a 45 feet boat. Uh, with a yearly maintenance cost of around 20,000 euros so, and it's around 40 year old and especially have a bank account of almost half a million, sorry. Uh, so if we look at our competition, we can actually see that we have a specific advantage. We can obviously have a specific research within the boat market and uh, we obviously going to offer the video lessons and live customer chat, placing us in a competitive advantage in the boat market. We are also tackling the sustainability aspect, which we believe is really important. So we're going to shift from plastic used for packaging towards more of a um, paper sort of uh, packaging, which can be done by us directly. Uh, we're also going to use more or less chemical products, moving towards the usage of a more uh, biodegradable detergents within the boat. Um, moreover, we're going to keep 25% of the money that we make revenue wise. It's going to be donated to uh, local authorities in the aspects of donations, um, such as the Monaco Ocean Protection here in Monaco. If it's in Italy, it's going to go to Genova. If it's in Spain, probably Madrid, and so on. Uh, in order for revenue, we're going to keep 8% commission for every single order we make. Uh, as I, as our timeline-wise, obviously, in 2023, we want to finish the app. 2024, we want to launch the app. So that's how it's going to work out. And if we look at our operational timeline, this is where we go from for our users. Uh, so our users are gonna simply increase. We're gonna touch around between after two years of working to our um, to be spare. And uh, we can see also the employees increasing and the investments within the uh, sustainability part. Every single year, in order to be a break even, we have to get 10,000 different orders. Thanks. Okay. Thank you guys very much. I'm going to ask you to stay on stage as we're going to present you now with a small gift from the Yacht Club. And I ask you to take center stage so we can get a nice photo of you fine looking gentlemen and lady, pardon. Thank you very much guys. Thank you very much again. So we'd like to once again congratulate the special award in yachting as well as the special mention in yachting. Um, very, very well done presentations. Okay, so let's move on now to the special award in fashion and accessories. So, and let me thank you to our outstanding special award in fashion and accessory journey panel once more. So let a round of applause, please. So now 
Let's have a look to the nominees. The special award in fashion and accessories is proudly sponsored by Angel for Women. At, the prize awarded includes the support for further business development provided by Angel for Women through Ana Maria Tartaglia, founder and board member of the association, CEO of the brand Seater, brand Seater with a proven experience in luxury fashion and fashion. Please welcome Mrs. Anna Maria Tartaglia, who is joining us online today. Hi, I'm very Good happy to be here with you, even if connected. Thank you so much. It's the second time that we sponsor the March Challenge and especially this uh, special award. As Angel for Women, uh, we are very, very proud to support the young talents and to invest our time, our mentoring, our money as business angel in the female entrepreneurs. The reason why we are here is uh, especially because we want to continue to scout and to support every female entrepreneurs coming from all around the world. Uh, the other reason why I'm here is because personally, um, I will follow as mentor the winner, and I hope to share and to give to this uh, startup all my support for their growth and success in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your support, Ms. Tartaglia. Next, we would like to ask on stage Mr. Maurizio Vela, who will present the award and the motivation behind it. So I'm really proud to be here to give this award. Let's read the motivation first. Okay. For its focus on craftsmanship and research, two values that fashion cannot ignore, a project, a project that embraces sustainability and technological implementation by creating an original and well-conceived mix. And the winner is, A30 from Polimada. Bravi. Hey guys. Once again, we will have a beautiful looking photo of our group. And they will not be presenting their project again as they have presented before. So we'll give a moment for this handsome group of people to take their photos. Beautiful. Thank you very much. Congratulations, guys. guys uh, it was amazing. Congratulations to each and every one of you. Very well deserved. And so, ladies and gentlemen, as the Mark Challenge has always been full of surprises, we have something more in store for you today. Because, again, the point difference was so small, once again, one point between the two teams that were tied for first and second, that we have decided to once again provide a special mention to the team for second place in the special award in fashion and accessories. So, we will once again have Mr. Vela, who will present... Yes, I need the second. 
pardon, excuse me. We are going to ask on stage Mr. Andrea Ciccini, who will come and present the special mention for the special award in fashion. Mr. Ciccini is the head of Group Omaches Agency. And in fact, I have just learned that he is online today. So can you hear us, Mr. Ciccini? Yes, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you. Yeah. Would you like to say something about your collaboration with the Mark Challenge? Definitely. First of all, I want to thank you, Professor Taquini, to let us know, be partner of the uh, Mark Challenge 9 edition. I'm very honored to be with my agency, partner of support the winner team. We believe in future, we believe in dreamers, and we believe uh, to the new generation. So we are a communication agency. We will, I'm personally, will support the team to develop brand identity and all communication strategy in order to develop uh, a good uh, future for them. So I want to, to thank you everybody and especially Mark Challenge staff to organize all this amazing uh, edition. And I want to wish good luck to the team. Thank you so much, Mr. Ciccini, for all of your support and for all that you have done for us here. So with that said, the special mention award is once again proudly sponsored by Krupa Matches. The prize consists of a marketing branding package for the team that wins. And once again, we will have Mr. Vela who will present. The motivations, the yes. Uh, the team has come up with a good solution to determine the price of watches sold on the platform by monitoring different uh, auction houses. Great concept and follow the success of platforms like uh, these in the hard world. And the winner is Watch Plus 24 from IUM. So thank you guys, congrats. We'll ask you to come on stage. We have again a one minute video alongside a four minute presentation, which will begin momentarily. Sorry. Hi. First of all, I would like to present our management team uh, that consists of uh, highly professionals and passionate for luxury uh, watches and technology. Uh, me, uh, I'm, I'm Johansson, co founder and CEO, and uh, Carlo, uh, he's co founder and CEO of the company. So, right now, we are looking for and hiring uh, highly skilled and uh, eager, motivated. Uh, um, members of our team. So if you know about somebody or you would like to join our team, you're welcome to contact me as well. <laughs> uh, so let's uh, talk about first the issues that watch industry uh, and watch collectors face today. Um, today you can acquire watches online on various marketplaces, on, uh, on auctions, auctions online, on physical uh, retailers, uh, etc. What watch collectors face today is that there is no easy reference data on uh, final sales price. So what, when you find, when you see your favorite watch you would like to buy it, you don't know actually if they're, they're, the price of the watch is the, the correct market price or is correlated to the correct market price. 
because what you see is actually the price based on the ask, it, ask price, uh, usually. Price. Another issue is that price monitoring for luxury watches is time consuming. You have to spend a lot of time going through uh, different web pages. And if you go on auction, uh, auction uh, web pages, you have to go to uh, hundreds of uh, different lots in, in order to find your favorite watch. There is no trusted source of price reference uh, information, and it's also difficult to keep track of upcoming auctions globally. Again, you have to, to spend time searching this information. So we came up with a solution uh, to build a platform that will be a state-of-the-art uh, digital platform that would allow you to follow multiple auctions in one streamlined format and monitor price information in, uh, in uh, one place. It will be based on, a, on an algorithm that would allow you to monitor watch price information in real time based on the final sales price from the auction houses. So we uh, came up with the idea based on the website, on, on, on a platform that exists today for art, uh, artprice.com, and uh, created this idea for watches. So the core features that we would like to develop on the platform uh, would allow you to monitor watch price information in real time, set alerts on your favorite watch models, uh, and monitor price evolution uh, over time as well. Uh, it will uh, work very easy. So you just search for your favorite watch, get price information in one click, uh, build your own portfolio of uh, your favorite watches and monitor that online and follow upcoming uh, ongoing auctions in real time and get alerts on that. So we aim to create an online meeting point between luxury watch collectors and auction houses across the globe by creating a vast community of watch lovers and collectors in one place and connecting them to the auction houses. So, okay, quickly on the market, uh, as you probably know, uh, the watch market uh, is booming in the last years. In particular, what is interesting is the value of the watches that is increasing in the last 10 years, the luxury watches market, the, the value increased an average of 87 percent and with the inflation that is coming again on the financial markets real assets will be even more interesting in, in this sense as a financial investment um, so therefore um, our target watch market is the high-end and ultra high-end so uh, after the 20,000 uh, euro and so for this reason it's very important to check the price of action houses that are the main uh, actors in this segment. Um, said this, we identified a, as our uh, target market 60,000, uh, 600,000 potential customers uh, based on the, our market research. And on this, we, we build our financial model that uh, let's say uh, envisage a uh, revenue of 7 million by 2025, uh, reaching 30,000 subscribers. Our revenue model is based on sub subscription of, uh, of customers. And uh, for this, we are looking for 200,000 uh, euro for the preceding financing. Uh, the competition is mainly based on uh, other platforms like Chrono24 is the most famous one, but they are all based on marketplace. And so the, the price that you see there is the one of the seller, not the one of the transaction. And this is the main differentiator point of our platform. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you guys, fantastic. So again, center stage please for that lovely photo. Absolutely gorgeous, thank you guys. Congratulations again. And thank you Mr. Vela for presenting the award. It was a pleasure. <laughs> Perfect. So, 
Entrepreneurship is one of the priorities of the Principality of Monaco, and our country is a kind of laboratory on plein air uh, for innovative entrepreneurial projects. The Mark Challenge is part of our engagement and modest contribution to support the role of the Principality to develop these entrepreneurial uh, projects and an entrepreneurial consciousness alongside. Because of this, we are very proud to launch a partnership with the Association of Italian Entrepreneurs in the Principality of Monaco. We have also a surprise special award in entrepreneurship. The prize consists of two invitations for two people to the fifth gala dinner, which AIIM organized in partnership with Forbes Monaco at the end of November 2022. Please welcome on stage Mr. Giovanni Paolo Rizzo, President, and Mr. Dario Casano, Vice President of the AIIM. You're welcome. Who's going to present the winner of the prize? Thank you. Well, good afternoon, everybody. We are very proud and honored with this joint venture with the University of Monaco. As you all know, Italy represents uh, a big part of the citizens who live in this amazing state, <laughs> definitely. And uh, so I want to say something peculiar because last gala dinner, for the first time in 20 years of the association, we gave the prize to the best selected young entrepreneurs. So youth and young entrepreneurs are the future on our life. And you will see that uh, the prize we have chosen is shows that time is our life. Thank you so much. It's like the Oscar Award. <laughs> uh, the motivation first. For the impactful communication, the well-executed video and the concept of presenting time in its various forms. I think somebody has to come on stage again. Watch Blues 24 is the winner. Congratulations, guys. Promise you it's the last one. Huh? <laughs> so we will not have a presentation as we just had one, but we will take a lovely photo with our two teammates. <laughs> and that's right. Uh, and Mark Congratulations. Mark. <laughs> and make sure you don't miss it. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank now, for those of you who are not familiar, an elevator pitch is, uh, well, for lack of a better word, a pitch in an elevator. Uh, basically, it's a very, very rapid fire way of describing what your company is, what your values are, what you plan to achieve and do, and try to convince the other team, if you will, the other side in one minute uh, that your project is the best out of all of them. So we would like to ask on stage one member of each team who will be doing the elevator pitches so that we can begin. We will have you all lined up behind us. And we will pass the mic from person to person. And unfortunately, I must say before we start that you will be cut off at one minute. The timer will begin once the first team presents, which will be Team Luca. So, Team Luca, when you are ready, you can begin your elevator pitch. Good afternoon again. My name is Caleb Mouchon, and me with my partner, Luis Castaner, make Luca Ventures. We're commodifying emerging and growing luxury businesses as assets that high net worth individuals can purchase a stake in through our business to develop a transparent and innovative way for 
their wealth management. So Luca Ventures differentiates itself by curating a collection of unique and specific luxury businesses that high net worth individuals can access investment in through our business. We create a community of engaged professionals and investors that have experience in a variety of fields that together grow our businesses and can help all of both investors and businesses grow. So join the future of brand financing with Luca Ventures. Thank you. Thank you, Team Luca. Next is Team 830. Whenever you're ready, the timer will begin. Everything you love about luxury's intrinsic value and the products you treasure is in danger of fading away. 830 connects all the different stakeholders within the, uh, the fashion industry using state-of-the-art technology. Empowered by uh, NFT's virtual reality, web and mobile applications to bridge between the luxury fashion houses and brands and the scarce human treasures from all corners of the world. And we do this through a very creative business model based on four diverse revenue streams, a subscription-based model for the platform, a commission based on the artisan's recruitment contract and a commission based on the project-based contracts and a profit sharing on the uh, NFT sold. From our experience and our expertise, we believe that this solution in this industry led by this team will create a very sustainable business model that would uh, shape the future of the fashion industry and help regain its lost DNA. Thank you very much. Third in line, Team Candor. Whenever you're ready. Giving may be broken, but now it is your chance to fix it. With the last 50 seconds that we have in front of you, we want to give you all the chance of trying the Candor platform out for yourself. By scanning the QR code in front of you, it will take you to the working prototype of the Candor app so that you can imagine what it is like to be a philanthropist on the Candor platform. Please take your time going through the app and follow the prompts provided. Candor was born out of a desire to revolutionize the giving system, and it begins today. Thank you so much. We'll give an extra about five or 10 seconds just so the judges can go through the application that was provided. And at the point that one of them looks up, I will begin to go down the line. Okay, we have some looks. Perfect. So thank you very much. Our next team to elevator pitch is Akimba. The floor is yours. Thank you. Akimba is introducing an innovative and premium lingerie that prevents embarrassing sweat stains and keeps your favorite outfits looking perfect. It's sustainable in two ways. It cuts down pollution induced by excessive dry cleaning. And also it's made of eco-friendly fabric. Akimba wants to change the way women wear clothes and care for them. It's a simple idea that will increase the quality of life of a lot of women around the world. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next team, RSG, Royal Sat Group, the floor is yours. The technology to receiving and transmitting internet is the same since 20 years, but our needs of internet are changed in the meantime. Uh, our product, our new product will be a revolution. It's feasible, it's smart, it's sustainable, and is applicable to every rural places. Thank you. And finally, but not least, Team Emma. At Emma, to our sustainable light footprint eco resort, we want to make discovery possible. We want people to be able to tap into pristine nature and heritage, and we we want to succeed doing so. So support us in that. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much, guys, for those elevator pitches. Most of you stayed below a minute. If not, some, some of you were only 30 seconds. So congratulations. Very well done, guys. You can leave the stage now. <laughs> I don't mean to be rude. I'm sorry, guys. Although I do love looking at all of you. You're all gorgeous. Beautiful. So with that being said, we are now going to ask our jury to leave the room to deliberate. They have a nice little space somewhere else where they can go and do so. And in the meantime, we are going to welcome to the stage Miss Olivia, your host from the communication team of the Mark Challenge, who's going to sum up the results of the social media contest that we recently launched. Thank you. Thank you. 
<laughs> Going to wait a second. Just the jury can. Okay, are you ready? Yeah. The floor is yours. Yeah. Now for you guys, I'm going to explain the social media content put in place by the organizational team of the Mark Challenge 2022. So the organizational team choose, um, give the opportunity to all the semi-finalists of, of the online battle to participate to a contest. So the contest was to, um, uh, to pitch their business ideas in the best way to, to an Instagram campaign. So, <laughs> I'm sorry. So they had to put a video or photos on Instagram and uh, then uh, the, there will be votes. So, and now I'm going to announce the winner of the, of the prize, who are the Grand Prix, the ticket for the Grand Prix of Monaco, and the winner is Luca. So Luca has the chance to... Luca has the chance to have the two tickets for the Grand Prix of Monaco. Here's to you guys, congratulations. <laughs> Yes. Congratulations, guys. And because we are nothing for our loved ones, uh, we also have a prize for the voters. So the voters has the chance to have a beautiful uh, package from Chile number five. So here is the beautiful package. Oh my God, so gorgeous. <laughs> and then, wow. I'm hungry. <laughs> and the winner for this beautiful package of for, from Chile number five is CC Parker 09. Unfortunately, they are not here with us, but we they're going to receive the package like right on time. Thank you very much. I should also mention CC Parker is not her actual name. Uh, that's just the Instagram handle. So don't be alarmed, ladies and gentlemen. And they also won 50 euros from the Société de Bain de Mer that they can spend all the year in uh, all, the, all the places, the restaurants of the Société de Bain de Mer. So while the jury is taking their time to deliberate on the best projects, of which there are very many today, we would like to ask you guys, the audience, whether you're here in person or online, to vote for your favorite project. So we're going to be opening up a QR code link uh, to vote for your favorite projects between the six finalist teams that we've seen today. And we will present an award to those teams just afterwards. So I'll step out of the way so you can see this. So scan the QR code or join us at slido.com. You have the passcode there. And we ask you to vote for your favorite team. Okay, I just sent my vote in, so I'm hoping that all of you guys are doing the same. And once you finish, 
once you've finished, you are welcome to come and join us for another coffee break. I can, ah, there we go. That's the response that I've been looking for. Thank you. Overall, we will be back in about 20 minutes to finish off the final awards and give the big awards of the day. So thank you guys. Yes. of the Mark Challenge or the MOPC. Yes, please. Come on, stage. I'm going to be a pretty good reporter on this, too. Oh, he's, he's got it. He's the best one. Good job, girl. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love this. Can you take a photo of us? I go, I go home after this. I have four more projects to finish. Thank you. 
sullo script? Cosa sullo script? Mi servono la lista dei premi. Cioè, sì, 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 ah, lo devo dare a, a, al massimo alla televisione. Ah, però se chiedi questo è il casino forse. Stavo deliberando, va tutto bene là. Qualcuno controlla, nessuno va bene. Eh, avevo detto Excel. Ah, eh, vai, a, vai a cercare un attimo. Ok. Vai, se non riesci a fare subito a Julie, can you please check that the jury is okay? They are the jury is okay, they are doing it. Okay. Yes, I've been working so hard. So I you should even go and say, you know what? It's a, I don't know, somebody remember. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to ask you to begin to take your seats. We're going to finish the mark challenge momentarily. I know you can't hear me. I'm, I'm talking to you there. Oi! 
All right, guys, we're starting again. But then they're going to go in, there's going to be no champagne. Then what the fuck, Matt? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're just going to take a second to let the extra stragglers take a seat and we'll begin momentarily. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I hope that you guys had a good coffee break and I hope that the jury had a uh, good deliberation, if you will. Um, so we're going to be getting into the best part of the Mark Challenge, which is the award ceremony. And we are going to begin with the best business pitch uh, voted by the audience, which we just did a few moments ago. And to present that award, we will ask Mr. Rumble Ramagnoli to come to the stage. Hello. Well done, everyone, today. Uh, that was, uh, for the jury, very, very difficult to decide on certain categories. 
Um, it's lovely to see this competition uh, in its ninth year uh, with so much energy, uh, so many great people from all over Europe and maybe the world. Uh, well done, Annalisa, for um, persevering in this competition that's growing and growing and we're moving up. And imagine we're going to be on the roof soon um, in this setting. Look at it. It's just uh, so Monaco. But well done. Um, I'm really looking forward to giving out this prize, uh, which is right here. And this is the audience vote. And the audience, the people have voted. The people have voted for Candor. Please come on stage, guys. So we'll again take a lovely little photo for a moment. Absolutely gorgeous. Thank you so much, guys. And congratulations again. And thank you, Rumble. Thank you. And thank you. Good. So. With that being said, we will now be moving on to the moment we've all been waiting for. The winners of category one and two for the Mark Challenge will be announced right now after five months of hard effort. But before recapping the prizes for both categories, please welcome all the representatives from our sponsors on stage and let's welcome them with a big round of applause. And they are Miss Olga Griova, Mr. Anthony Sacon, Mr. Tomas Papanicolau, Mr. Rumble Ramagnoli and Mr. Enrico Poli. We're taking a lovely photo. Right. We'll take a nice photo for a moment. Yep. Thank you so much. Once again, a nice round of applause for the Mark Challenge sponsors. If it weren't for you guys, we would not be here today. So thank you all from the bottom of my heart. Okay, okay, enough with the heckling back there. Come on, good. With that being said, we're going to recap our prizes for both the categories. From Ampirent, only for category two, 2,000 euros. For age form, a tutor day with, within age form companies of value of 2,000 euros also. From Nearest Kronos, a 3,000 euro sales optimizing, optimization workshop. From Relevant, one hour discovery meeting with your team to understand your business model as well as your objectives in KPIs and three hours of consultancy with a senior specialist to help you to develop strategy and advice on digital, on digital best practice. And from VBC, a free premium virtual business card. A nice round of applause for that set of prizes, if you will. Perfect. With that being said, our first prize is the best business plan in the student category. This is category one. And we would like to ask Mr. Anthony Sacon and Mr. Michel Duquier to come on stage and present the award. All right, you doing? All right, okay, well. <laughs> so, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a real pleasure to be here again, at least, yeah. uh, many times. <laughs> so, it's, uh, it's always uh, something uh, very exciting. So, we, we've been working pretty hard, right? In, with the, Indeed, uh, it was a very hard decision in some yeah. way because uh, all, all, all the projects were fantastic. Each one of them have values, proposal, uh, amazing, really amazing yeah. job. Uh, 
we we felt really the responsibility definitely to, <laughs> definitely there. definitely very impressed anyway the favorite project has been selected on the basis that it does leverage and empowers the values of luxury from heritage and tradition to today's world of excellence and change and changes with a technology and strong integral and social marketplace of artisans as well as pillars of system sustainability it's a great win-win and passionate solution so i guess you probably have guessed who the winner is and the winner is 8 30. <laughs> all right Thank you so much. Really, very good. Well done. Congratulations. Really. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Very well done. I think everybody loved really. it. We are looking for one now in uh, H Farm for one day. Yeah? Thank you guys again so much. Your presentation was not only fantastic, but I think it left not only myself, but a large amount of the room quite speechless. So you should each be insanely proud of what you've done. Congratulations. <laughs> And now for the best business plan of the second category, alumni and professional, please welcome on stage, Mrs. Olga Grilova and Mrs. Amel Bubaya and Mrs. Frederica Brun Bruno for the award. Please, please a round of applause. Maybe you want to say a few words because we've been through quite a few projects that were quite exciting. Uh, thanks to everyone. As it's been mentioned already, it was very hard. Uh, so, so we actually asked for more time <laughs> to deliberate. Um, in this category, now I don't have to talk about myself. It will be much easier, I, pr I promise. So while the first category has been straightforward and striking into the sustainability approach, uh, which we highlighted just now, this time we believe that the most innovative project actually with a very, very strong potential, uh, a market space has been spot. So well done on that. Uh, without giving out too much right now, there will be some further opportunities, we believe, to develop that project, but clearly well done. And the winner is... The winner is Royal Sacred. Congratulations. Okay. Thank you again so much to both the teams. Congratulations to the both of you. Very well earned. Uh, very hard work was very obviously put into each and every one of these projects. And before we go to our closing speech, I would like to first just present a nice gift to the jury. So the jury will be receiving a gift from VBC as well as um, Chile number five. So can we present those gifts to our lovely jury now? In these beautiful black bags, might I add. For all the hard work, the dedication and the support that you've given us at the Mark Challenge, 
It's the least that we can do to give back. Thank you very much to all of you. And to finalize the ninth edition of the Mark Challenge, we would finally like to ask Mr. Jean-Philippe Muller, the General Director and Dean of the International University of Monaco, to come on stage and provide a few words. Good evening, everybody. Uh, just some words because the place is nice, the weather too, so maybe we want to go back to the to the deck and to have a drink together. But it's time to say to say thank you to everybody. This ninth edition was amazing once again for different reasons. Because first we are back to normality. Everybody loves online things, but to be together physically and on site, I think it's uh, it's very important for interaction. Thank you for the jury member to be here with us once again and to spend time with young entrepreneurs to give your experience and feedback. I think it's important. That's the role of a business school to develop entrepreneurship and entrepreneurial spirits for the student. That's the DNA of the International University of Monaco. And I'm very proud to have all those uh, participants here for the final, but the more than 300 students part of the competition this year, uh, 50 schools and uh, more than 50 different nationalities. It's amazing. Congratulations to the winner. Uh, it's nice to have you in Monaco and uh, congratulations for those projects that are very entrepreneurial, but not only. Uh, looking at you, I'm very optimistic looking at the project, very sustainable, uh, with a lot of ambition for a future world. Uh, most of you uh, have in your project this uh, new way to, uh, to develop the business, and I think it's very interesting for uh, the future of all of us. Congratulations to the team, especially uh, Professor Annalisa Tarquini for the organization of this night edition. Congratulations to uh, the students of the International University of Monaco because they are the organizer of the event with uh, Andrea Barbacelletta. Congratulations to our amazing speaker that our students too, and uh, they did well. And now it's time to uh, give you a rendezvous for next year because this ninth edition is specific because it's just before the 10th. So next year is the 10th anniversary of the Mark Challenge, and we want to organize a very, very amazing rendezvous. So I hope to see you again next year. Enjoy uh, the end of the day. Thank you for coming here and hope to see you next year for the 10th edition. Thank you very much to all of you. Thank you so much, Dr. Miller. <clears throat> And with that said, that brings us to a close for this year's Mark Challenge. If I may just take one moment, this is my fourth year at the Mark Challenge. And from year one, I have been blown away by the projects. Each year, the projects get progressively, progressively complex, and they get progressively and progressively more intricate and interesting, if you will. I am very sad to say that this is also my last year at IUM, so next year I may not be with you. Um, for some of you, I could see the smiles on the face, but um, I would just like to thank each and every one of you from the bottom of my heart um, for all the support that you've given, for all everything that you've done for both myself, the Mark Challenge team. Um, we're grateful beyond words, so thank you. Thank you all so much. I also wanted to thank you because this is my first year. It was not easy. And uh, I wanted to thank you also the team because they are very supportive. And I'm very proud of each team that bring amazing ID. And I hope to be here last year to see the other teams and to see all of you. Thank you. And that concludes our ninth edition of the Mark Challenge. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you again for your attendance. Thank you for your attention. And after this, we will be having a networking event as well as an after party at La Rascas. So I hope to see all of you there. Thank you. There we go. <laughs> Dr. Papa Nicolau is coming. We got one person. You're not free to go take a drink.